What is duplex stainless steel? Yeah, well, the term stainless steel suggests that it's a steel, a iron-based alloy, and we have at least 10.5% chromium and a maximum of 1.2% carbon. That's just a definition. Apart from that, we can add all sorts of elements. We can add more chromium, we can add molybdenum, we can add nickel, because we want to control the steel in to either have very good corrosion properties or some certain mechanical properties. And of these, uh, probably the most interesting one regarding the mechanical properties, that's nickel. Because if we have 0% nickel, there's a very good chance we end up in a body-centered cubic structure, which is this one to the left. It is strongly magnetic. It's also called the ferrite, and it's actually the same structure as the, you can say the mild steel, which we use for making cars. The opposite, when we have at least 8% nickel, then we get the body-centered, no, the face-centered cubic, also co uh, called the austenitic, and it's this one, and it's virtually non-magnetic. If, as said, nickel is a very, very strong, um, we'll say, austenite stab stabilizer, if we half the amount of nickel, then we end up not in a third structure, but we end up actually in a, as a mixture of this one and this one. It's a bit like if you build a house of two different colored bricks, where we have the yellow bricks here, we have the red bricks here. If we go very, very close, you can actually see that it's interchanging one yellow, one red, one yellow, one red. But seen from a distance, it's, um, it's just, it, it looks just as homogeneous as anything else. So the duplex is really a double structure. Why are the duplex steel very interesting? For two reasons, both mechanical reasons and corrosion-wise reason. The problem with all types of stainless steel is that the corrosion resistance in most media, especially when we're talking about pitting corrosion, crevice corrosion, it's dependent on the chromium content and the molybdenum content of the steel. And for instance, the so-called acid-proof steel contains 16.5% um, chromium, between 2 and 3% uh, molybdenum, but still it has some limitations. And uh, this very, very nice example, I bet the owner with the equipment, he wasn't, he wouldn't quite agree that it was a nice example. But it is uh, of crevice corrosion in this flange, like I said, acid proof steel. It was sitting in a sewage, um, a piece of sewage equipment handling high chlorine sewage water. And this is just a question of, of time, and then we get penetration. How to fight? crevice corrosion, you need to have some more chromium, you need to have some more molybdenum. And this is exactly what we do with this duplex stainless steel. We add more chromium, we add more molybdenum, but then we turn down the nickel content. Why? Because nickel is very expensive. So if you can add a lot of chromium, a lot of molybdenum to try to combat corrosion like here, but at the same time, lowering the nickel content is actually good business. And this is what they do with a the, with the duplex stainless steel. The 4462, the most common type of duplex, which is this one, it contains between 21 and 23% chromium, between 2.5 and 3.5% uh, molybdenum, and only 5% nickel, whereas the acid proof actually has 10% uh, nickel. But this one is actually much better. It's got a pitting resistance equivalent of about 31 this one is down to 23. It's even more, the difference become, becomes even better if we look at stress corrosion cracking, which is, in my opinion, probably the most decorative po uh, type of corrosion. The owner of the equipment will regard it as the absolute disaster, which it is. This axle has su clearly suffers from a lot of cracks. And this is actually not due to fatigue. This is due to stress corrosion cracking. And uh, stress corrosion cracking selectively attacks the austenite face, the face-centered cubic. Especially the 1808 or the acid proof one are very sensitive to stress corrosion cracking, whereas the duplex stainless steel is virtually immune. So there's a lot of corrosion reasons why duplex are very in interesting. It becomes 
even more obvious if you go to the, you can say, to probably the worst everyday media we have and that's natural seawater. We have a lot of it in the North Sea, which all the Norwegians, the English, the Danish discovered in the mid 70s when everybody, where everybody tried to start digging for oil in the North Sea. And suddenly these production platforms were surrounded by, by tons and tons and tons of very evil-minded seawater. And this evil seawater containing about 3% sodium chloride would attack virtually any type of stainless steel. In most cases you'll get crevice corrosion, sometimes you get pitting corrosion, sometimes you could even get stress corrosion cracking, especially for warm equipment. And the solution here was to develop a very high grade of uh, duplex steel, we call it super duplex, containing 25% chromium, 7% nickel, still we need about this 50-50 balance, and then between 3 and 4% uh, molybdenum. And they're actually sufficiently resistant to cope with virtually anything on the production platform. So, of course, it's annoying. Stress, it was a uh, duplex stainless steel. It's more expensive than the acid proof. Not that much, I have to say. The super duplex are even more expensive. They're actually very expensive, but they're so much cheaper than if you're having a breakdown and you have to wait for about two weeks to get the next spare parts. So that's why they're using it. So it's actually just good business. <laughs>